Hi. Hey. Hi there. Hola. Que hola. It's Gigi. I'm a fan who likes to talk to other fans about a plethora of shit people talk about, but mostly TV and complaining about it. I don't know. Uh, today we're talking to Galia, AK. And then we're talking to the only friendly ghost nowadays, Ronnie, <laughs> AKA ghosty, 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 ghosty. Ooh. Boo. <laughs> We're going to discuss some TV, some acting, complain about some shit, talk about some shit, discuss some shit and do some theories. Let's get right into it. Okay. So the podcast, my theater. You know. Dios. <laughs> mm. Episode we have some one. feelings. <laughs> episode one. What is the opinion on episode one? Well, the first I, episode is called Por Fin Paris. Por Fin Paris. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Ronnie. I like episode one because it's just they're transitioning into Paris. And, you know, it, like how Callie was saying earlier, it shows how Camino is struggling with the language barrier. And you can also see a little bit of Maite's life where she's a little social butterfly <laughs> talking with everybody, etc. Um, and then the way it ends is, you know, they they connect, which is great. I, I did like episode one. Yeah, I agree with you. I really like the, the first episode because it kind of sets the tone for what we're going to be experiencing later on on, on, on the episodes that are, are coming, you know. Because like you said, Rani, um, my, Camino, we see my, Camino struggling with French. Because she's in a in a different country that speak a different language from her that she has no idea, you know. And then we see Maite's lifestyle and how Camino feels like, um, like she's not really a part of it yet. Yeah, yeah. Cause what we're about you? Right into Maite's life. Right, like Camino just gets dropped into Maite's life, and and you know, like what the hell? <laughs> I don't, I don't think Maite realizes that Camino is struggling at this point. I mean, it, it like I imagine being in that situation, mm -hmm. like I always do. I put myself into these things and see how yeah. I would function. I, I, I'd be straight up. Like, this is new. I'm excited because we finally got out, but like, this is new, and I am sorry in advance. But you're gonna have to help me walk through it. Also, this woman is years older than um, Camino. Camino. So she was to expect this, but I'm guessing since she is just 35 or something about around that age, that's still young. You still don't know what the fuck you're doing. <laughs> well, for that um, era, I think 35 was old. <laughs> was it? I mean, I I feel like in the first episode we start to see how Maite is just like so used to being her in her own shoes and her own lifestyle that she kind of forgets that Camino is completely new to this. And we see it a couple of times, how Maite leaves Camino alone. And then, yeah, she comes back for, for Camino after she remembers, oh shit, Camino is here too. Let me go back to her. I don't want to leave her, you know. Dejé los frijoles. Se están quemando los frijoles. <laughs> and by frijoles, I mean, I mean yeah. por little Camino. Yeah. <laughs> Paul little tank tank. So episode two, what's the name of episode two? Le Col. La, Le yeah. Oh Jesus. The University of Painting. First of, of all, art. <laughs> it was really nice that at least like Maite helped her find a, her to something school. to yeah. do. That yeah. was cute. And like she helped her, encouraged her to do something, to learn something new, to expand her mind. That's something that's really good that I always liked about them. That Maite was always willing to, you know. Put her out there, tell her to express herself, try to stand up for herself, all this other crap. Even though she was always very afraid about the relationship back and forth, bipolar bullshit, but I think that's the writers. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> honestly. I mean, I made a guys. video about it. <laughs> I made a video about it. I mean, yeah. I'm going to link that shit. Go, I'm okay. going to link it. You're going to watch it. It's going to happen. You. Right there. Right there. Mm hmm. <laughs> but um, I think that the, that that her doing that gesture was good. I don't know. I don't know. I was I, I was um, I was iffy from the beginning of the podcast, mostly because I'm very critical about audiobooks in general. This is not an audiobook, but audio productions like nah, audio productions. novella. I guess. Yeah, audio novellas. I'm really, really, I'm really critical. I listen to a lot of them. 
And so it's like, I was like, okay, all right, I'm going to give it a shot because at least they're doing some sort of spinoff situation and they're not cheating us out of loaf. You know what I mean? Yeah. So Mm -hmm. we also got to see a little bit of Sophie's flirty flirtiness. Yep. With Camino. Sophie pisses me off. I'm sorry. No, I love Sophie. No, I like Sophie. She makes me mad because she's such a bohemian. Great. (laughs) (laughs) Kaya. You know, the thing is, okay, wait, I will Sophie's explain. Sophie's amazing. <laughs> wait, Sophie and amazing. image just, <laughs> just popped up to my mind, just um, running at me with like forks and, and pitchforks and, and torches and stuff, <laughs> banging on your, on your house. A la Sophie no la toques. A la like, Sophie no la toques. Stay away from Sophie. <laughs> Anything for Sophie. Anything for Sophie. <laughs> ah, Sophie. <laughs> I like the fact that she was so bohemian and she's so free and open and friendly and 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 a bit flirty. I actually kind of like that. Yeah, I didn't like that she like. First of all, you're a bit too flirty. You need to put some respect on Camino's Camino. place <laughs> yeah. in Maite's life. Get it together, because she doesn't you. know that she doesn't know that she's imposing. There's yeah, I don't think don't, she realizes. Mm-hmm. It's just who she is. She's this tactical, you know, flirty type, bohemian type, interested in everything, but she's <clears> not realizing <throat> that she's imposing. Well, my evolution with Sophie was different because at first I didn't like her. I'm mm-hmm. like, ah, this fucking bitch is going to ruin my Tino. <laughs> and then as the episodes progress, we see that it's not really Sophie's fault. What happens between Maite and Camino is just really Maite's and Camino's lack of communication, you know? So. Well, that I will never take away from it because it's kind of like your internal relationship is your internal relationship. But there are yeah. external factors that can affect something. But I just don't like the way she went about. Let's go. Episode three. Amantes. Amantes. Lovers. Go ahead, Gigi. Explain why you dislike Sophie. Okay. <laughs> Still, I have la, the image la, la, in my la, la. brain. <laughs> Torches and big force. <laughs> the episode where Mike starts talking to uh, Sophie about her feelings towards Camino, how Camino doesn't let her work, and so on. And Camino just hears them talking and she drops the teacups. Okay, so even here, I was kind of okay with Sophie. I was like, you know what? They're having a combo. She's just venting. You have friends, you vent. You know what I mean? It, yeah. it it happens. That's all I felt about this episode. Literally, I was stuck on, she's just venting. It's okay. Friendship. If we go friendship. Yay, friendship. You know? Well, this is the first episode that I think we start seeing how Mighty is so used to being in her own skin that having Camino with her 24-7 starts to bother her. And actually kind of get into Maite's shoes at this point because it's the same thing with Mari and me. Like, Mari had to get used to being in, in my life. You know, I was used to being alone. And then when she came in, we started living together. I, I understand Maite is in your situation completely because it happened to, it takes a while to adjust. I mean, it's, it's really difficult from going, going, like being single to mm. having a partner mm. and not only a partner but a partner that you live with we learn <laughs> you learn it took a lot yeah, to learn but, but this episode specifically i like so much because it just brought me back to when Maddie and first uh, Maddie and me first started and i'm like damn they, they really really were able to like show the story of two people just like in love not spending so much time together at first because they couldn't for whatever reason then now being thrown together and you're like okay we need to work on on something else here it's difficult you know relationships are difficult and i like this episode specifically because of that yeah um i i kind of didn't look at it wholly that way and now that you're you're saying it it makes a lot of sense Uh, makes a lot of sense i like it yeah, it's like the real the real relationship starts, right? The infatuation honeymoon phase was in Acacias because mm-hmm. they couldn't be together. And now, right. oh, shit, now we're together. How are we going to make this work? So exactly. I think it's, a, it's a learning phase for both of them, mm-hmm. um, especially. And it, it's also the writing, right? So when this when this episode starts, you hear like bed sheets moving and stuff like that. It says you're supposed to assume that 
Sophie and Mike, they were like doing something because then you, you hear Camino coming in and they're like frantically moving around type of thing. But we know that's not the case. They were just messing around with their art and talking about the exposition. And then, of course, make, calling it Amantes Lovers. <laughs> which is, yeah. which, that's just the writing to to make us believe that Sophie is the threat. Right. Yeah, they were messing with us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were literally messing with us. And I really like that episode exactly for, you know, all the points that we have made, but also because when we see a movie, you know, like a regular romantic movie, we see how they go from point A, not being together, to point C, you know, yeah, to being in love, Casello, and then you get the, the credits and then like the end. And I'm like, what happens after though? Mm-hmm. I think that the adjustment period, not everybody wants to see the adjustment period. And yeah. it needs to be seen because that's, needs, that's yeah. where the real stuff is at. Yes. That's, that's where the interesting stuff, you know, starts coming out because you really start seeing how these two people come together. You yeah. see people's quirks. You see people's um, habits. You see how they deal with each other's habits, how they address each other's habits, yeah. how they interact on a day to day basis. I woke up in a bad mood. How you gonna act? How you gonna act then? I'm interested to see it. I'm interested in seeing how the logistics work of being together, of mm-hmm. yes. adjusting. Like, also somebody. Okay, I know a lot of same sex couples, and I know a lot of regular couples. But a same sex couple told me at some point, you know, I have no shame in saying we schedule our sex sessions. <laughs> She legit I mean, told if me, it works, you know, it works, it works. She yeah, legit it told works, me, she legit told me it's so good. It's so good. We get so tired. It's like a full on workout. So we have to like prepare and Come time prepare. ourselves for it. <laughs> and she's like, she's like every time it's worth it because it's like amazing. And I'm like, how long have you guys been together? They've been together for more than 12 years. So Damn. it's kind of like if you're at that point and you're okay with it and you're happy, I like to see that kind of stuff. Just funny, yeah. goofy, yeah. random day-to-day shit. It doesn't have to be like monotonous. Kind of, I did this on Monday. But like, if you're going to make a sick, make it interesting. Put something new. Put something different. Put something human. Put the realness of being in a relationship. Because like movies, TV shows, they taught me how to get the girl, but they didn't teach me what to do once I got her. How to keep right. her. Yeah, yeah. How do you keep the girl? How do you keep mm-hmm. the girl? How do you not piss her off? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's where I fuck up. <laughs> You know, all these like, girl, but how do I keep her? The whole yeah. thing, uh, I don't know. The whole watch my Tino, <laughs> dude, for real. <laughs> but like, imagine like the movie Pretty Woman, let's say, for example, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, yeah, I got the girl, <laughs> I got the girl, but like, what about Happen her baggage afterwards. and her, her, like, her trauma and her yeah. issues? And where does she live? And did she pay rent? Did and she like, go where's to her school? family? Did she go to school? Did she have a job, like an actual <laughs> yeah. job? Like, these are the things. Like, and they don't have to be like, like you're a writer, you're a creative writer. Make that shit fun because I know you can. I've seen examples of it. My Tito podcast is one of them. I don't have to see their kiss to be like, "Ooh, that's so cute." I heard that shit and I was already like, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Creative. Writing. I mean, I would like to see it just because of their acting, not because of the kisses. Oh, yeah. I, like, I, I, if they I don't agree. kiss, that's fine, but I just want to see it. Their acting is really good. I know their yeah. acting is really, really good. All right. Episode four. Celos. Celos. This episode pisses me off. Wait, is that what it was called? Celos? Celos. Yeah. Go for it, Gali. Tell me. Go for it. I want to hear it. So this is the um, the episode that Camilo gets Camilo gets sick. And Maite just straight up leaves her alone. Like... No, but she wanted to stay, though. Like, those mind games, we're not doing those mind games. We're not doing that. The passive aggressiveness. Yeah, Yeah, we're not doing that. If you're going to say, go, leave, go to your party, because I'll be fine, you come back. You'll be fine, you'll come back. That's something that Mrs. Gigi taught me. If you're going to say the mind game, no, no, no. We're not doing it. There's absolutely no excuse. I will not take an excuse for it. I don't care who you are. There was no excuse for that. I know uh, another part is I'll, I'll also go off on my day. Homie, if you know your lady, she just got to this country. You know your lady's not feeling good. If you mm-hmm. can honestly tell them, listen, my partner's not feeling good. My friend is not, I'm not feeling. Whatever you can do 
if it is possible because we don't know if it is possible fucking do it like no like this is not stayed. logical like because i mean it was it was nothing official it was just her hanging out with um nico and sophie so. like yeah it was just some bullshit it was like, a dinner together no? like a regular you know like friends just hanging out so, so that's, that's that kind of pissed me off, yo. Yeah, so that's, yeah. that's why when Camino's like, Pobrecita's super sick at home, Maite just leaves her, and I'm like, what the fuck are you doing, Maite? Like, you sh- really shouldn't be leaving her alone. She shouldn't. She shouldn't. And, she- and Camino should have expressed t- specifically, I would actually like for you to stay with me. Yeah. Yes. I wish they would have talked about it. The problem is that an episode before we heard um we seek well we we heard because we don't really see it camino just um listening to Maita's conversation with sophie on how camino is like spending too much time she wants to spend too much time with Maite to the point where Maite can't really paint can do her work so at this point i feel like camino feels like she's like um messing up Maita's life and that's why she's like no you can go it's okay but it's like Maite, you should you should know better than this it's communication again these two yeah. these two had this thing in spain and they were chilling and shit happened and shit hit the fan and things got difficult but mm-hmm. i think that maite and camino in this in this situation should have kind of thought of the fact that this is a different circumstance different situation different country different laws different shit different lifestyle and both of them should have said something to each other like i don't need to tell you shit about my relationship you know who i need to talk to the person in the relationship Mm-hmm. truth facts yep a hundred percent that's it there's nothing else to add that is it so this is where the fandom started to get upset. to lose it <laughs> yeah but you know what i don't i don't blame camino i can't really blame her that much because she's a kid like this is literally her first relationship she doesn't know what she's doing so i feel like maite should have been like okay camino is completely new at this let me at least try to do my best to communicate with her but they don't <laughs> so it's, it's like what the fuck man it's really frustrating what do you think ronnie i want your opinion on this <laughs> the one that's single <laughs> the one that's single. yeah you know why yes. you know why i want to know your opinion of course because you see these things from the outside mm-hmm. and so a lot of times when we're single, we see things a certain way. But when we're yeah. together with somebody, we see things another way. And it's not because we choose to. It's because, our again, our circumstances and our lives have changed. And unless we've realized that and kind of adjusted to it, our mindset is going to be like, okay, this is what I think and this is the truth. Mm-hmm. So I'd rather get everybody's side of the story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Every single person's point of view counts, you know. Yeah. So what do you think about this miscommunication situation? Well, I mean, that this was the the problem of the entire podcast, right? They weren't communicating with one another. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Camino was trying to let her be have her own life. But at the same time, and we don't know this yet, she's starving herself and that's why she's sick. Yeah, we see that next episode though. When I first heard this, though, I thought she was faking it. I thought she was being passive aggressiveness, like pretending to be sick or faint or whatever to have her stay. That was my impression. You know, I was like, yeah. oh, I don't like this manipulating Camino, trying to keep her from the party or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but Mike did should have stayed because if your partner's sick, whether they're faking it or not, you got to stay. I mean, that's the rule. I mean, as far as I know, that's what the movies have taught me. I don't know if that's what you do in real life, but that's no. what I've seen. And she didn't stay. And I think that's when the fandom started to get upset because it was so unlike her. But so the reason why I kind of give Camino a, um, a pass um, is because, like I said, an episode before we see we we hear Camino listening into Maite and Sophie's conversation about how Maite feels about Camino being on top of her the whole fucking time. So Camino at this point is just like, I don't really want to be a, a bother to you. Like, I don't want to bother you. Just yeah. go ahead and do what you like and I'll stay on the side. So uh, episode, what's the next episode? Five. La Visita. So this is the episode we finally find out that Camino is actually sick sick because she stopped eating to help Maite not waste like so much money on food. Oh, but, this is the, the chewing episode where Nico yep. is like 
like her breakfast. It's so gross. I just like, okay. Could somebody explain to me, how did you not notice your girlfriend wasn't eating if you live together? I mean, remember she's, uh, Maite is doing the... Um, Unless she was like hiding it. The um, this position she's working with the gallery thing with Sophie. So she's uh, not yes. really paying attention to Camino at all. And we realized this because exactly like you said, how do you real? how can you find out that your girlfriend is not eating? Yes. The fact that she got sick was kind of like, it, <laughs> that made me upset. Made me upset. Made me upset. At both of them, actually, not at one. I got, I got mad at both of them. Why? Because first of all, Camino, this is your health. Why? True. Like, second, Maite. Like, I understand you're busy, but checking in with your girl every day doesn't take a lot. It really doesn't. Honestly, it really doesn't. Asking simple questions like, "How you been? How's it doing? Oh, what'd you eat for lunch?" But if Camino Super isn't shit. giving like truthful responses, and you know, yeah, that's why I'm mad at both of them. Because it's yeah. kind of like, come yeah, on. Yeah, but remember, Camino is, is feeling like she's a hassle for Maite at this point. Cam, Cam, Camino doesn't want to feel like she is... A burden. A burden, yeah, exactly, for Maite. And that's why she kind of starts keeping to herself to the point that she gets sick. Because in her mind, not eating will help Maite, but not really because now Maite has to take care of her. Yeah, it's her immaturity. I mean, she's only 21 mm-hmm. years old. Yeah. And she's thinking she's helping the situation. But it's just making it worse. Yeah. And that's live and learn. It's a live and yeah. learn for both of them. Yeah. That's not something that you can kind of like figure out. I mean, I still believe she could have checked on her girl. And I still believe that Camila should have said, should have done something, said something else, opened up her freaking mouth and expressed her concerns. I still believe that wholeheartedly. But I do know that shit happens. You have no control. Can we talk about the fact that Nico and, and Sophie have like the worst timing in the whole <laughs> fucking world? <laughs> The worst. I just, yeah, oh well, this God. is where he starts to like crawl his way into them, right? Because he like takes her breakfast from her and like invites her to this dinner. And... No, I think he invites her in the following episode. No. Dos cenas para dos. No. Dos cenas para dos. Cenas para dos. No. That's, I know, but oh, it's wait. he invites. He invites oh. all of them, and that's like, oh, it's only going to be you two because we're busy with the exposition because he's eating these eggs, right? <laughs> that's right. You're right. You're right. So, Dos Cenas Para Dos is the one that we they actually, actually do hear the them. Yeah, they're yeah. actually doing the dinners. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, yeah, like, why would you take the food away from somebody that needs, needs it? food? <laughs> <laughs> but he doesn't know <laughs> that. He's just being me. a weirdo. Like, there's a lot of shit that I, I mean, do that I don't yeah, really there notice. There are like that, that take food off of other people. Gigi, yeah. like, how is he not going to know Camino is sick because she didn't eat <laughs> well, for God knows how long? You know what? Yeah. <laughs> like, that makes no sense. <laughs> He's just a dick at this point. And this is the first time we start seeing him kind of like... Like, um, Metiche. <laughs> yeah, like, like talking to Camino and being like, metiéndole el bichito, like, like saying, oh no, you know, Maite and Sophie and you just spend so much time together, blah, 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 like making it seem like Maite and Sophie are having, um, a relationship on the side. So it's like, why would you tell her that? Wait a minute. But didn't he, wasn't he, I might have heard that differently because I, in my mind, I have the picture of this gullible man who doesn't know that his wife is more out there than he thought. And he's over here with his little romance eyes. And she's over there doing whatever she wants because she thinks that he understands, but he actually doesn't get it. And he's walking around thinking one thing and her doing another. Well, that also got laid out in the first episode, right? Yep. Where that one artist has like a different muse every week. And mm-hmm. then Sophie's trying to reinforce to Nico where you're my muse, right? But Nico's mm-hmm. probably saying, like, I'm your muse right now. Like, am I going to yeah. be your muse tomorrow? Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, okay. So we see, like, Nico's uh, insecurities just being put in Camino at that point. Okay. Yeah. He's projecting. Yeah. Towards Camino. Mm-hmm. And Camino's, like, you know, half dead. So. <laughs> yeah, Camino, <laughs> la pobre, is like, she's just taking it. She's like, oh, yeah, you're right. Like, I've seen, like, some weird, you know. Yeah. So. And let's not forget, she's just been through hell. <laughs> you know, she's like tired. It's yep. like, man, I just been through the worst year of my life, aside from the, fi- the point of meeting Maite. But yeah. my husband just died. My mother finally forgave or finally accepted our relationship. Kind really of, kind of, but not really. 
there's a possibility that she's dying. Oh, wait, no, they don't know that she's dead yet. So it's like, and she's far away from everybody. So she's been through hell and back. And then now we're putting Nico in her is like, Dios, give the woman mm-hmm. some, some reprieve. Yeah. Like, leave her alone. Let her dress. Yep, exactly. But I, I think that's what I think that's why he takes uh, advantage of Camino because he sees this uh, person struggling, fighting for her life, trying to like come back, you know, to being herself again, and then he just takes advantage of her. Yeah, like saying she's in her lowest point right now, so let me just start like talking shit about my thing. And it's all like real, like the whole thing feels really sleazy and like gossipy and very sleazy. And yeah, and it's just like it makes me uncomfortable. Like that couple makes me. Un- mm-hmm. You know what I think it is? I don't think it's Sophie. It's alone. not the couple. It's Nico. No, no, no. But I think no. that for me, it feels like that's another another weird couple to add to this weird couple. And like Sophie might have good intentions and she might be cool and everything, but she's she has this man she is. who is just like instigating. My question to myself is, do you know how he is? Have you nipped it at the butt? Are you okay with that? What what's the deal? What's going well, she's on? Not gonna, what's happening? You don't think about that when so, when you're in love with somebody. Remember the blind of her on? Yeah. So when you're in love with somebody, you don't see the this perspective. It's only the people on the outside that see that type of thing. I think I have a theory for that, though. I think the problem with uh, Nico and Sophie is the same problem Camino and Maite are, and Maite are having, is that they don't communicate. They they stayed in, in that part of life that, oh, everything's, like, colorful and wonderful, and we understand each other to perfection, and we love each other, and everything else is just going to work out by itself. And they stay there. They don't talk about the problems. So yeah. we kind of see, like, a parallel between Maite and Camino and Sophie and Nick. Yeah. See, okay. There you go. Let's be Nick, Nico for a bit, right? Let's say you're insecure in your relationship or you, your girlfriend's a flirt or your wife's a flirt. And now you think something's going on, but then they name this exposition Amantes. It's like, wait, that that's a little, it's a little suspicious. You know, it just piles on instead of actually like communicating. Naming, I think when they named it Amantes, that probably just instigated more of his insecurity. Exactly. Yeah. I think the moment they decided, like like you said, Ronnie, to call the, the thing Amantes, it's like it, it just flipped and switched for, for, for Nick. Like he was like, what? <laughs> yeah. I agree. Yeah, think about it. If like, let's say I'm working with Luce, Gigi, and then we make this project and we're, and we're spending a lot of time together. And then we all of a sudden we call it like, you know, a threesome or something like that. You're going to be like, wait, what? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. The so exposition I can, wouldn't I can, happen. I see, yeah, I can see Nico's. Um, it wouldn't happen. Period. Point of view, where where his insecurities are coming from, from what he's seeing. Yeah, mm-hmm. I agree. I agree. Maybe it's because I have like more of a foothold on myself in those in the terms of like love and like knowing what you want or whatever. And uh, being put in Nick's shoes, I, that wouldn't even that wouldn't even happen because I would be like, no. Yeah, but we're talking about people that are because nobody's perfect. Nobody's and we perfect. all have problems in our relationships. Yes. And I feel like they're specifically Sophie and, and, and Nico, they have been together for God knows how many years already, and they stick to the same thing that isn't working. Like in the surface, it looks like it's working, but underneath, and we see it with, with Nico, it, it's oh, there's something wrong. A lot of things that aren't because, spoken about, a lot of things that you don't yeah. say. That again, that all goes into communication. Mm-hmm. Definitely. And so, but where the the writers messed up though, because Maite and Sophie have known each other for forever, and. <laughs> Mm-hmm. You know, they've been together in Paris for these past four months. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That's where and, the, we're reading too and, much into it. I think I am. I don't. I don't think we are. I think. Mm. I think we're we're hitting like you know the points of what they wanted to 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 show us, or you know, yeah. actually for us to listen to because we don't really see anything. But I also feel that because Mike and Sophie have been friends for a long time, that maybe if Nico had all these problems with um. Sophie's um, sexuality, why is he with her? She probably thought he could change her. Mm-hmm. He probably thought that once she got married, she'd settle down. Probably. Yep. And that's where you fuck up when you go into a relationship thinking you're going to change someone. Yep, yep. You, yeah, but how many years have they been together already? It doesn't matter. They have matter. been like, together ex- for a few years. It, the thing is that you're expected to evolve and to grow and to uh, kind of 
can move forward. You're not expected to change your person. I don't, ex- mm-hmm. I've been with Luz Amos for 10 years. I don't expect her to change. I expect to learn and to evolve and to move forward. I don't expect mm-hmm. her to change. I don't want her to change. I like her the way she is. Thank you very much. Her quirks, she can learn how to deal with them. She can learn how to deal with them. I can learn how to deal with them. You know what I mean? Um, I have my threshold. That's why I said, like, if I was in, in, in his position, I'd be like, yeah, no, with the Amantes thing. No. But like, I don't expect her to change. You're not expected to change. But if you're in a marriage for how many years, like you said, for how many years, and you're still doing the same thing that hasn't brought a breakthrough to your, to, to, to your couple, to your to relationship, that's something to deal with. That's something that can change a lot of things, that can stop a lot of things from happening. Like him keeping that hope of her changing her person or adjusting to him is unrealistic no you can't do that like you can learn but most of the time the way you are after you're a certain age i think what is it ronnie a certain age like you that's that's your that's your person that's your character yeah that's just how but a lot that's where a lot of people mess up though i think women Mm -hmm. especially think they're gonna change their 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 partner Mm -hmm. like oh he doesn't Mm -hmm. do this or Mm -hmm. she doesn't do that Mm -hmm. we'll we'll fix that type of thing and that's Mm -hmm. where people mess up Mm -hmm. And him flipping the switch when the Amantes um, thing comes up, it makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. Because for how long has he been like doubting himself before? He's probably known her to cheat on him a couple of times with a couple of women. You don't know. He probably has seen that, but they don't, again, no communication. He doesn't talk about it. I don't, I don't think she has cheated on Nick. That's what I just think that's, I just think that's Nico's insecurities playing against him. That could be it too. Because if if you listen to her when, when she talks about him you can clearly him. understand that she loves him like she's not in love with anybody else it's just that that's just the attitude that she has sophie doesn't see anything anything bad in nico right because she's she's really in love with him and she doesn't yeah she doesn't have nico's perspective of her like being a social butterfly and flirting with people and stuff like that because she's just being who she is in any way plus it is the city of love we got to think about paris right menage a trois everybody's hooking up with everybody so i can see a little bit how nico's insecurities have bottled up and now they're gonna explode also let's keep in mind that sophie's not spanish she's french so her the way that she was raised the 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 way that she is maybe has to do with her culture being different from Nico's and and maybe that's why he he gets the, like this way after with her like your mind you know like yeah he's more conservative and she's she's right. more liberal and we start seeing uh, the I don't like saying this but the machista in him you know coming out mm-hmm. a little bit mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> because of where he comes from you know so so Sophie Let's say, I'm just going to say it. Sophie might love him. She probably she does. does. She does. She does. I'm you know what? Sure I'm going to go ahead and not say probably. She does love him with all her heart. That doesn't stop her from fucking somebody else. But I don't think she has. I don't think so either, but I'm just saying. But placing, I'm putting that out there because you never know with these writers. With these writers. You never know. But just because you love somebody... You love them so much as a couple, as a person, you love them. Doesn't mean you won't open your legs for somebody else. I mean, listen, I've well, seen many of things. Of course. My- <laughs> I mean, obviously, yeah, that doesn't stop somebody else from sleeping with, you know, with another person. Now, the question is, why is Nico jealous of Maite? Because if Sophie had slept with somebody else, it wouldn't have been Maite. No, yeah, so exactly. Why? So this is why I don't think Sophie has cheated on Nico. I just think it's just Nico's insecurity and not speaking it out there, you know, like like telling her, hey, you're spending too much time with your friend. I understand your friends, but she's a lesbian. Like, maybe you should stop, like, being so open, you know, about everything and just spend a little bit more time with your men. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, I think what's happening is just how Mike is talking a lot about Sophie, like Sophie this, Sophie that. Mm-hmm. I'm sure... Right. Um, Sophie's talking about my thing because they're spending a lot of time together. And also coming up into the next episode, Sophie's a very free, you know, she even like, that's why she makes that comment towards my thing, Like, why can't we just kiss each other? You know, because that's her, that in her mind, she, she doesn't understand the monogamy. She doesn't understand like why people just like once you find somebody, that's it. It's over. Especially the French. I mean, to this day, I know French people yeah. who are like, I love my wife and everything. And I love her. So what's wrong with me screwing somebody else? There's nothing wrong with it. I, I, I Like, that's okay. And to us, we're like, dude, that's your wife. Like, this person. Yeah. You're supposed to be with her and just her. But to them, 
Et je sais, c'est l'amour. Je ne sais pas. But hey. that mentality, I'm never going to understand. Because if you really love somebody, why would you go behind their back and fuck somebody else? I don't know. So would it be better if, if, if there's something? Because Yeah, that's what I was just going to say. I was like, would it be better? If the, I don't know. It's weird. I don't know. I've never been in a situation. I don't know. Because listen, if you're in love with somebody, but the sex doesn't work between the two of you, talk it out. Just explain for fuck it out. What works for you? I mean, yeah, but in sex, yeah, it, because when you, you have sex somebody, <laughs> listen, when you have sex somebody, they're not that's always going to know what you like, right? Like, we're not mind readers. If Mari doesn't tell me what she likes, how the fuck am I going to know? But after a couple of years way. of telling somebody that you don't like your pussy licked a certain way, come on now, Kali. Come on now. <laughs> come yeah, on. Sorry. If it's not working in the bedroom, I don't care how much I love that person. Come it's on out. now. <laughs> like, just the love goes out the window. I mean, yeah. it's then, just one of those things that's a whole package. On, yeah, you, you move, on. move on. Yeah. Exactly. Because exactly. no, no amount of love is going to save that relationship without the sex. That's <laughs> really sick. There's only certain uh, things sex you can work like there's people who sex is important to them in a, in a in a in a partnership, right? Like I've known people that sex is important. It's it's part of it, yeah, 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 but it's not a priority to me. You know, our relations with each other and our sexual relations with each other is on top of my priority list for a relationship. Or uh, that and sp and and sp like a spiritual understanding, like understanding each other, being on the same page. Those are the the tri the the tr trinity of the things that uh, th there is no other. Like if those things aren't there, we're not going to be together. Period. And I get it. So this whole situation with like it's weird. To those people that say that sex is not important to them or it's not the most important thing in a relationship, I say it's bullshit. The moment sex stops working between two people that relationship can only go down from there but That's is sex true. the main because, thing though be, because when There's is the main thing asexual, no asexual, but is 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 it is really important because the difference between having a partner well one of the difference between having a partner and, and and being single is that you have somebody to fuck so when 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 the sex aspect of it goes away then what are you left with just another friend well you're you're left with an intimate more romantic relationship and connection with that person you you have a, a, a not only a a mental connect a spiritual connection with that person um an intellectual connection with that person a more intimate and private and sensual relationship to somebody else people who are asexual known as that is a priority friendship. not necessarily because i wouldn't i wouldn't speak about a lot of things with friends there is a lot of things that i will not speak to friends about i will only and exclusively speak to my future wife about there is no other person i will talk about these things with now i do understand that like sex is a big thing but some people For some people, that's just not up there. It, I'm not saying it's the most important thing, but I'm saying that it is up there. For you, yes. Yes. Unless you're For asexual. a lot of people. For a lot of people. Let's not forget about the For asexual people. For a lot of people. The asexual people. That's what I was like, saying. True. That, that, that is true. That is true. For a lot of people. That's that's what I've been saying. Yeah. The, for asexual, that's not a thing. They don't, like, they can find pleasure in it, but it's not. Mm -hmm. Up, it's just not a thing so it isn't up there for them you know what i mean for me it is okay like for me having a healthy sexual relationship with my partner is number two like it is it is important that sexual intimacy that release mm -hmm. that, sh that that they, all of that right i've known sexual people that for them They find different things to fill that space in their hearts, in their lives, in their bodies. So that's the only reason why I say that is because there are different people that that's not really, it's not a thing. It's really not a whole. Mm -hmm. For me, at first, I was like, wait, what? What are you talking about? Sex is like the most important thing in life. Like, are you crazy? <laughs> But then I met these people and they explained and I was like, Ugh. there's a lot of things that I still don't get. <laughs> But that's something that I do understand. This is all I can say. People are weird. <laughs> Are we? We are weird. <laughs> yeah, but we are, we're different, and, and, with, and yeah. we're different, and with differences comes different preferences. And it's like being open enough to kind of like understanding these things and discussing these things is, is what oh, exposes for sure. a lot of people to new information that they probably didn't know about. 
like mm-hmm. um like for example us discussing this stuff with uh, this relationship uh, a lot of people might not look at it that way i mean like I keep saying, and I've always said this, and you guys know I'm always ranting about this shit. I'm always saying <laughs> that entertainment is a reflection of real life. It is a place where people find solace. They find ident- identification. They find understanding, information. Op- like They open themselves up to new horizons. So I like to dissect these shows mm-hmm. and be really fucking gay about it. Because I think that a lot of people <laughs> need to fucking hear this shit. Ronnie, people need to hear this. Yes. Because we're learning about how to keep the girl. Number one, you got to <laughs> communicate, communicate, communicate. If these shows ain't going to give us one, the guide, my dinner did. <laughs> keep the girl 101 by Ghosty. <laughs> I would read that. <laughs> I would read that in a heartbeat, son. Like, <laughs> how to keep the girl. Hey, Ghosty. So let's move on to the following episodes. Dos cenas para dos. So in this one... Again, my thing, I get pissed off again. <laughs> yeah, we get pissed off at my thing. <laughs> she goes and had instead of joining. I mean, she had the idea, but Sophie convinced her otherwise. She had the idea to go join Nico and Camino, but Sophie said, "No, let's just do it here. Let's just have dinner here." And then Nico and Camino are having their own little dinner where he's planting even more doubt inside Camino's little head about the relationship between Maite and Sophie. That dinner made me While uncomfortable. At the same time. Yeah, while well, at the same time, mm-hmm. Sophie's being all this free love and like, let's kiss. Like, what? why would it be such a bad thing if you and I kissed each other? That bothered me. <laughs> like, why is life over once you find your person? Like, why do you have to yeah. give your entire time to this one person? That's, that, in the midst of my anger, that I agree with. That's why, uh, like, my partner was like, we're going to be together. We're going to get married for the foreseeable future. I freaking love that phrase for the foreseeable future. It means I'm going to be with you this whole time. I don't know when it's I don't know when it's going to end. Maybe I die. Maybe you die. I don't know what happens. But for the foreseeable, for what I can see so far, I am definitely going to be with you. That's like the greatest shit in life. See, that shit freaks me out. That's what that's what I have commitment issues like having one person for the rest of your life, like the same person. Oh, I mean, this was great. Back, <laughs> That's back the in the thing. olden days when you only lived to like 30, 40 years old, yeah. but now you get to live to like 80, 100. I mean, that's, oh, that's, that's the a thing. lot of time with one person. That's what's wonderful about the foreseeable future. Because Ugh. I don't have to be 70 for us to be over. This is why I love motherland. We got to talk about that shit. Because... When you get married, you make a deal we for have. five years and call it a fucking day. I'm with Sophie on this. I'm, I'm all. I'm, yeah, think about it. Camino's 21. She's going to be with Mike for the rest of Mike's life. That's like, ugh. Unless you're completely okay with that person. My grandmother and my grandfather were together for more than 50 years. They bicker, but they love each other like nobody's business. So. Que aguante. <laughs> <laughs> Year one, you're like this way. Year two, you're this way. And then five, all right, I'm done. Next. You need to meet a Motherland Fort Salem fan that understands that concepts concept and agrees to it with you so you can just divorce in five years. And it's okay. Because mm-hmm. it just doesn't make sense. Like, we're, we live long. The forever was built because people didn't live forever. They lived, they lived to like 20, 30 years old, you know? But, and they were done. But also, marriage is not the same as it used to be before, especially with like millennials yeah. and people our age. Like, it doesn't work the same. <laughs> it doesn't. You know, they last a year and then they break up, get divorced. For real. Get All married right. again <laughs> two years after divorce. Okay, so those cenas para dos. I didn't like this episode. Uh, listen, first of all, man. we see uh, there's two things that bother me in this episode. The first one is um, Maite just lets Camino go with a man, knowing what Camino went through all by herself. A person that she doesn't even know. I'm talking about Camino. That Camino doesn't know Nico. So it's like, why would you have Camino go with this man that she doesn't even know? And not only that, but be by herself. She might not feel comfortable to do that. And Maite doesn't even take in consideration what Camino went through as a kid, you know? So, and that's not to say that every man, you know, is going to rape a woman or whatever, but... Camino by 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 my feeling secure in in terms of I don't really want to be left alone with a man after what I went through I don't feel comfortable doing that not yet it's called trauma <laughs> mm-hmm. 
<laughs> yeah, that's I mean, that yeah, the writers could have. They missed about. a big opportunity yeah. with that one, with with Camino's interaction with um with this guy with Nick, because um yeah no, with a person with that kind of trauma that wouldn't be that way. Sorry, and it's like, what are you? What are the writers thinking? They're not. I I I I think they kind of tried a little bit to make it seem like Camino wasn't comfortable going along with Nico because it's, it's clear that Camino doesn't really want to go to the to the dinner without Maite but she gets pushed by all, by the three of them really by Maite, Sophie and, and Nico I don't think she was thinking so, I don't think she was I don't, I don't think I honestly uh, I, I, I think it was a lapse of judgment on Maite's part and it's kind of, I'm not excusing it but I'm just saying those are those, it seems like that was the situation no I understand that Which is why I don't I don't blame Maite 100%, even though it kind of pisses me off a little bit that they didn't take that in consideration, you know. But then the second part of it comes out, and that's what I'm like, okay, I've had it. Like, I don't understand what is going through your brain. So you send Camino away with a man to have dinner, and when you're finally done working with Sophie, instead of actually going, hey, let's go, let's meet them. Let's just go have dinner with them. You decide to go alone with Sophie. Why? That's dumb as shit. Why? She's maybe she's just trying to have let Camino have. But she's not doing life. it right. I don't think At she gets it. Time, I think I don't think she gets it. Yeah. I just don't. I think they wanted to create so much drama in the podcast that they kind of forgot like basic stuff about the characters. Yeah, because like and Camino. being raped is like fucking huge. Like so, it's like. That's really like that was very unrealistic for me. I was like, I mean, I know this is fiction, but damn, y'all fucked it up. Like what kind of no. It's also the time, right? The time slot. And there's only so much you can convey audio <sighs> yeah. versus visual. Yeah, Ronnie, I understand it's that. It's trauma, and, though. And <laughs> I give them a pass. I, I give them a pass sometimes <laughs> because of the tra time restraint that they have. But they didn't need to create. Like, if you were going for drama, why you have to make it, like, just blow up? Like, complete, like, out of this world drama that wasn't really necessary, that in some parts of it makes no sense. Because you can have two people not communicate and have this back and forth, like we start seeing at the beginning of the podcast. But, but then, for me, this is the episode that it just went from, okay, I understand the drama. I don't agree with it. But I understand what they're going for. And then this episode just made it seem like, okay, that's what are they doing? Well, like, I think just they're, went... they're trying to create that illusion, though. That's why Sophie's being really flirty, flirty in the way it's edited. Because um, the 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 writers are making us think Sophie's the issue. We still don't think Nico's so much the issue. We think it's still Sophie. But we see that, that Nico starts to be the issue in this episode. So it's not like getting... Mike and Sophie away from, from the dinner? It's not... I mean, I understand they want to show us how Nico just starts getting more and more into into Camino's brain. From that point of view, I can understand why you needed Mike and Sophie out of there. But they could have picked any other timing for that. They didn't have to make Mike just be like oh let's just go you and me together alone without them let's just let's just leave them alone and let's stay here i would have preferred for them to just stay at home and and keep yeah. working and they can still have that conversation they could yeah. have a drink while they listen work. i think that so far the podcast is um it's interesting because it's sparking conversation it's not one of those monotonous mm -hmm. weird boring like novella thingies which is freaking great but um Let's see how it goes to for part two, the second half of this thing from six, from seven to 12. <laughs> Let's see how that goes. Oh, man. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> this is going to be We got to talk about that. <laughs> we got to talk about the fandom, how they are like... You guys, like, let's talk about this in the comment section. Let's talk yeah. about this. You know, send me a message, all that shit. Put it on Twitter. Let's have a conversation because these things, some of the things that might, the, might they be doing in this just be like blowing minds. Like, I don't understand... I don't understand. I learned this is how you not keep the girl. <laughs> don't do what Maite does. So <laughs> do the opposite. <laughs> so the things that Maite is doing are do how do to them. not to keep the girl. <laughs> <laughs> But stay tuned for the make-believe book, How to Keep the Girl by Ghosty. <laughs> You're welcome. And no, how, how to keep the girl for like five years. <laughs> for five years. <laughs> for five Only years. five years. 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, dude, that's sad. That's been my average. <laughs> <laughs> Your average. <laughs> God, oh I my goodness, I don't know how <laughs> successful this book is going to be. But thank you. Uh, now that you've had a chuckle with this craziness, I hope this is not the last of our voices in your ears. Thanks for listening. This is Gigi Kalia, a.k.a. The Dildo Tater. Ronnie, a.k.a. Ghosty. You guys have a wonderful day. Bye, my babies. Bye.